Are you prepared to be scared? Well, you better be. Some horror movies are difficult to watch from start to finish, while others are downright impossible. Of course, we collected the most disturbing, creepy, and downright horrific movies to date, so this video won't be for the faint of heart, and there will be spoilers ahead. Before we begin, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to become a part of our notification squad so you never miss a video. <laughs> Teeth the 2007 movie Teeth is not new to the realm of horror films. It's also the movie everyone in high school giggled about because of its crazy and somewhat inappropriate premise. In case you couldn't remember, it's about a young female Christian abstinence advocate who has a disease that makes her have teeth down there. That in itself is horrifying enough, but once people actually saw the film, it became known for putting audiences off to the point of leaving the theater, reportedly having nightmares for weeks and even sleeping with all the lights on. Unsurprisingly, it's the more intimate scenes in this movie that really messed with people, especially the dudes in the audience for obvious reasons. Talk about graphic. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Mother. Even Jennifer Lawrence being in this movie couldn't make it digestible for a wide audience. The 2017 psycho horror film Mother follows j Lob, who's trying to live a pretty tranquil life with her husband, but all that gets flipped upside down with the arrival of a strange, mysterious couple. Now that plot doesn't sound too scary, but it's the haunting fever dream that follows that made moviegoers lose their lunch and scratch their heads. The climax of the movie sees Jennifer Lawrence's husband accidentally kill their newborn baby before the child gets devoured. Yeah, you, you heard that one right. This movie is messed up. Lawrence's character also gets beat up and burned, and her heart is taken out of her chest. That's not even counting the emotional and physical abuse the character goes through. Many critics gave this a low rating because of how distasteful it was. People flocked to get out of the theater midway through the film, and we can't say we blame them. <laughs> Raw. Just like number two on this list, Raw has a sizable amount of cannibalism. When the 2016 film begins, veterinary student Justine is a lifelong vegetarian, but she's forced to consume meat as part of a hazing ritual. Seems a little out of place to become a vet, right? Just after eating it, she becomes consumed with an uncontrollable need to devour human meat. At one point, her sister accidentally cuts off her own finger and passes out. Naturally, Justine picks up the severed appendage and, after a few moments of hesitation, eats it. For a couple of viewers at the Toronto International Film Festival, that was enough. At least two people passed out, forcing the festival to call an ambulance. Others fled to prevent vomiting. But eating a human finger is just one layer in this messed up horror film sandwich. Justine also begins to act more and more animal-like, including stealing hamburgers to fill her hunger for flesh and crawling on the floor like a possessed animal. That being said, it got rave reviews for having such a strong female lead in a horror film, even earning 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. So there's that. A popular movie reviewer at Rolling Stone said it's a contender for best horror movie of the decade, giving the gross-out film four out of four stars. If you can make it past the minor issue of cannibalism, then this may just be the film for you. A Serbian Film a Serbian film centers on a down-on-his-luck adult film star who signs one last contract with an independent producer. Unfortunately, he doesn't read the fine print. In order to get the money that he and his family need, this actor must do everything the producer asks. And that means everything. A Serbian film's various assaults on the senses are just straight up overwhelming. So it's not for the faint of heart, or really any human if we're being honest. It's almost a snuff film, and kind of feels like you'll be put on some sort of creepers list if you watch it. Even the film distribution company for the US had a hard time finishing this movie. A Serbian film's director tries to defend the gross-out theme of the film by saying it isn't just for shock factor. He claims it's a struggle against all the corrupt authorities that govern our lives for their own purposes, specifically the political climate in Serbia. But come on, this is just a bit much. If only all Rome had just one neck. Caligula. 
According to the stories, Caligula, who served as Emperor of the Roman Empire from CE 37 to CE 41, wasn't a very nice guy. He started famines on purpose, he slept with other men's wives and bragged about it later, he had an affair with one of his sisters and pimped her out for others, he threw orgies, spent money on bizarre and frivolous pursuits while his subjects starved, fed criminals to wild animals, and had suspected political rivals humiliated or outright killed. He pretty much did whatever he felt like doing with no consequences. Bob Guccione, who founded the adult magazine Penthouse, thought all this would make a great film, but that wasn't the case. In 1979, Guccione released Penthouse's one and only feature film. Caligula, a historical epic featuring Malcolm McDowell, Helen Mirren, and Peter O'Toole. Even a good cast couldn't save this film. There's tons of lewd scenes featuring all kinds of bodily fluids. It's basically one long, gross, horrific, triple-X adult film. Its runtime is just about three hours long. That's a long time to sit for any movie, but to sit and watch these nasty scenes take place one after the other would make anyone want to run out of the theater. Acclaimed film critic Roger Ebert couldn't sit through it, and that guy's seen almost everything. We doubt you'll fare much better. Oh Hereditary. Now, this one may be a little on the controversial side. Some couldn't finish the film and had nightmares for weeks, while others were totally fine with it. This kinda makes us worried about those who were able to sit through this hot mess of a film. Director Ari Aster describes the recent film Hereditary as a personal project. I had gone through some stuff with my family, Aster said during a Q&A session. I took my sickness and now put it inside all of you. And now we get to bear witness to it in one of the most horrifying movies of the decade. While it got rave reviews from the Sundance Film Festival, it also caused many others to leave the viewing area at the festival because they couldn't bear to watch it anymore. In Hereditary, Toni Collette plays an artist, Annie, who just lost her border line abusive mother to cancer. Meanwhile, her relationships with her husband, her son, and her daughter especially are slowly deteriorating. Many say it wasn't the paranormal stuff or the jump scares that got to people. It was the very real emotions depicted in the film that struck a chord. From the character's intense emotional baggage right at the get-go to paranormal creepiness, talking to the dead and severed heads, it's one upsetting theater experience. Ah! Oh, please stop! Hostel. Best buddies Josh and Paxton spend the summer after graduation on a backpacking tour of Europe. While in Amsterdam, they meet Ollie, an Icelandic traveler who shares the boys' love for sex and drugs. They hear that a Slovakian hostel is filled with all their favorite vices, and like every hapless character who trusts a stranger, the boys end up in a slaughterhouse. That's the very definition of stranger danger after all. Inside this depraved death house, rich denizens pay to fulfill their darkest torture fantasies on, you guessed it, Josh and Paxton. It's a a pretty simple plot that's in the same torture vein as the Saw films. These unlucky guys undergo bone crunching, eye popping violence. With all its goriness, it probably wouldn't surprise you to hear that Hostel was produced by Quentin Tarantino, a guy who loves nothing but bloody, bloody violence, almost to the point of being laughable. It got 61% on Rotten Tomatoes, saying featuring lots of guts and gore, Hostel is a wildly entertaining, corpse filled journey, assuming one is entertained by corpses, guts, and gore, that is. <laughs> Meet the Feebles If you're a big Muppets or Sesame Street fan, stay away from this movie, as it'll most likely wreck your childhood. This film is filled with Jim Henson-like puppets doing drugs, watching XXX flicks, and dealing with paternity lawsuits. You can also see the Feebles roofie each other, push through PTSD-fueled Vietnam flashbacks, and go on mass shooting sprees. It's as distasteful as a movie can get, and it's only made worse by having puppets doing these things. Oh, and did we mention that Meet the Feebles was directed by Peter Jackson, the man who brought Middle Earth to the big screen? Yeah, that's right. Meet the Feebles may be too disturbing for many viewers to finish, but for Peter Jackson, it worked out very well indeed. After being a commercial flop, it was given cult status much later on. So, while this isn't in the same lane of disturbing as the other films on this list, Meet the Feebles is in a cringe-worthy category of its own. Let's hope this movie never sees the light of day as a remake. Mama? Good Night Mommy 
Having a creepy demon child has been a strongly held trope in horror movies forever. But the creepy child idea is totally flipped in the Austrian movie Goodnight Mommy. Two young boys by the name of Elias and Lucas become suspicious after their mother returns from plastic surgery with her face wrapped up in bandages. Begging the question, is this lady who returned home really their mother? Of course, when they believe she isn't their real mom, the boys become increasingly paranoid and violent toward her in an attempt to reveal the truth about her, even getting to the point of tying her up. While this movie doesn't have a ton of gore in it, it makes up for it in the way of twisted and off-putting physical terror, like the boys super gluing their mother's mouth shut and other demented things. What's kind of cool about this film is that you don't know who you're rooting for half the time. Is it the boys or this mysterious woman? You'll get your answer by the end of the film. That is, if you can make it to the end. Apparently, the ending is must-see due to its shocking twist, but the movie is so unnerving that many haven't been able to finish it. Regardless, you'll probably leave with some mommy issues after just watching a little bit of this flick. Maybe, you know, who knows? Creep. There's a whole other category of horror films that was seemingly everywhere for a while, the found footage scary movie. The film style can feel frighteningly realistic, not to mention the relatively low budget needed to make a scary story. Creep centers on a filmmaker who is short on cash and answers a Craigslist ad offering $1,000 for a single day's filming. His first mistake? Never do anything off Craigslist. He arrives at a remote cabin to document the life of an odd recluse who appears friendly, but as the day goes on, is revealed to be less sincere. While we can all agree the whole found footage trope can be occasionally misused and not scary, Creep does a fantastic job of not falling into the cliches of the genre, which makes this film absolutely chilling in its simplicity. The filmmaking technique lends itself to a truly personal horror, and the interplay between the two main players is intense. There are no fast-paced thrills in this film, but the last scene is worth waiting for. It pulled a high rating of 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, which described it as a smart, oddball take on found footage horror. Creep is clever and well-acted enough to keep viewers on the edges of their seats. And man, we loved it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there you have it. Do you think you can sit through any of these movies? Which movie do you think should have made it on this list? Let us know in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more great videos. Thanks a whole lot for watching.